There are several different kinds of stem cell transplant. In myeloma, the most common type of transplant is what we call an autologous stem cell transplant. That's where the patient uses their own stem cells. The stem cell transplant process encompasses three distinct phases. The first one is collection or harvesting of the stem cells. Now this is done when the myeloma, the bulk of the myeloma has been reduced as much as possible by initial treatment. So once the stem cells are harvested and, harvested and collected and they're sent away to be frozen, uh, within the next five or six weeks, the patient will be admitted to hospital. When they're admitted to hospital, that's where they will receive the high-dose chemotherapy, which pretty much uh, wipes out their, their bone marrow, their immune system. And that's when they receive the previously harvested stem cells um, to re rescue them from that, from that uh, high-dose chemotherapy. So they will be in hospital for between two and four weeks. Uh, the shortest amount of time I've known anyone stay in hospital is two weeks. So it can take up to four weeks for the stem cells um, to migrate back to the bone marrow uh, and to make a new immune system. Um, and once the blood counts are uh, pretty much near normal level, then the patient is discharged. Um, and it's a process of rehabilitation and recovering at home. The first few weeks of discharge, they will be very closely monitored uh, by the, the transplant team uh, and they will be travelling back and forward to hospital on a regular basis, but the recovery should be um, smoother after that. There are two other types of tr stem cell transplant, uh, allogeneic transplant, which is a transplant using a donor stem cells. Now that isn't carried out very commonly in myeloma because it is a much riskier procedure. Uh, generally, if an allogeneic or donor transplant is considered, it's usually in the younger patients, younger and fitter patients. The other type is a mini transplant, which is an allogeneic transplant, but it uses a much lower dose of chemotherapy. Symptoms and side effects of uh, stem cell transplant are mainly due to the high-dose chemotherapy. So unfortunately, um, not only does the high-dose chemotherapy destroy any residual myeloma cells, it also destroys some of the healthy cells, and, and we've said that it, it pretty much wipes out the bone marrow. Um, chemotherapy kills fast-growing cells. Cancer cells are fast-growing cells. Unfortunately, so are the cells that line our gastrointestinal tract, so the mouth down to the stomach, down to the intestine. So it's very common for patients to get a sore mouth, um, for them to be nauseous and for them even to vomit. Um, and diarrhoea, unfortunately, is also commonly, um, commonly occurs after a stem cell transplant. However, having said that, uh, stem cell transplants are carried out in accredited units where the staff are all very highly trained uh, to be on top of any possible complications very quickly. Infection is probably the biggest risk to, to transplant patients and this is why they're in a, a, an area of isolation. And as I've said, these, these areas are accredited units where the procedures and protocols are, are very uh, strict with regard to um, infection control. There will be an infection control specialist um, who monitors the situation, who monitors the area to make sure that everything is carried out to the correct and safest procedures. Um, um, and patients will get um, what we call prophylactic antibiotics and that means that's antibiotics to prevent any infections happening. If a patient does get an infection, uh, it's treated very promptly, very quickly, um, because unfortunately um, infections can lead to something more serious. For instance, um, a simple chest infection can result in pneumonia. So they are treated very promptly by antibiotics. If the patient has been discharged and they start to develop signs and symptoms of infection, like a high temperature, for instance, or uncontrolled shaking, then they will be treated with antibiotics 
works again very promptly. Uh, the patient and the carer will be given contact details um, of a, a healthcare professional to get in touch with quite quickly um, once they're discharged. It can be quite a boring time um, in, a, in isolation in a stem cell transplant unit. Um, often patients are encouraged to take things in from home, um, laptops even, books, photographs of families and friends, crossword puzzles, um, and visitors will be encouraged as long as the visitors um, don't have any signs or symptoms of infection. So anybody with a sniff or a snuffle uh, would be asked to stay away. Um, but it can be, a lot of the time will be sent sleep, spent sleeping. If someone is feeling a bit poorly, then, then sleep is a great healer. Um, so, so sleeping will take up a lot of time, but they will, the patients will be encouraged to take things in from home to keep them occupied. Taking in um, adequate nutrition whilst you're in hospital can be quite tricky, actually. Um, if you do develop a sore mouth, you won't want to eat. Um, your appetite will be, be lowered. You won't feel like eating or drinking. It's possibly more important to try and drink as much as you possibly can. Even if you're not taking in a good diet, try and maintain a good fluid intake. If you are losing weight, then there may be um, it may be necessary for a referral to a dietitian or a nutritionist, um, and they will oversee prescribing um, high protein drinks or, or these drinks that you're called Ensures, which have all the nutritional contents of, of a meal. Um, Chewing ice or sucking on ice lollies is, is often quite good and it can prevent you getting a sore mouth. Um, uh, this is what patients tell us uh, on the info line if they chew or suck on ice when they're getting their chemotherapy. It can often prevent them getting a sore mouth. Um, once they get discharged home, unfortunately, they, they can the, the reduced or poor appetite can continue for some time. Things can taste differently. There may be a metallic taste about food. Something they've enjoyed previously isn't quite so enjoyable. So again, this is where the carer plays a very important role. Um, and it's a case, I guess, of little and often, just a little bit of what you fancy. If today you're enjoying scrambled eggs on toast, absolutely eat as much as you like. Um, but it's just, you know, if, if something that you enjoy, then, um, uh, then do make lots of that. Whilst you're in isolation and the chemotherapy has reduced your immune system, um, you will be on what we call a clean diet because obviously there are bacteria found on food um, so you wouldn't want to be um, causing the patient to, to develop a bowel infection for instance by eating something that's contaminated. So for a while whilst the, the patient's blood counts are extremely low they will be on a, a clean diet which comes up from the hospital kitchen and it's been cooked at very high temperatures so that all bacteria um, are killed off. There's lots that patients can do to, to aid the recovery in hospital. Um, try and comply with what, what the doctors and nurses tell you. I know that isn't always easy um, if someone's telling you to eat something and, and the last thing you want to do is to put something in a sore mouth. Uh, but if you can eat, um, then, then do keep a good fluid intake. And be vigilant about, about symptoms and side effects and do report them very promptly. Um, if you are having diarrhoea, um, let the nurses and doctors know. They may need to take a sample, send it off to the lab um, to make sure that you're on the correct antibiotics. Um, and I guess um, it's easy for me to say, but try to have a positive outlook. Um, a lot of patients do say that it, it does help and, and to have something to look forward to perhaps when, you, when you're discharged. I know that many patients and carers do tell me that they start planning holidays or even a weekend break in the UK um, for when the, the patient's fully recovered from the transplant. It gives you a goal, it gives you something to look forward to and it can often help your uh, recovery. Regular gentle exercise certainly has its place. Um, exercise is good for um, toning muscles and of course any bones that have been damaged by the myeloma, um, it, it does help if they've got good toned muscles to support them. Um, it's very difficult to do exercise when you're in an isolation unit in the hospital, but there will be exercises you can do even sitting in your chair or in bed. Um, and of course, 
exercising your legs regularly on a daily basis will help to prevent blood clots from forming. Um, Regular exercise also has psychological benefits as well. It improves your feelings of well-being um, and makes you, makes you feel happier. Once you're discharged from hospital, the level of exercise can um, increase on, on a regular basis. Many patients tell me that, to begin with, um, they just go round to the shops uh, for the newspaper and then the walking gradually increases and before they know it, they're walking two, three miles a day. Often regular exercise can be overseen by a physiotherapist, so if you have a particular problem with your mobility, if you're finding it particularly difficult to get that back to some level of normality again, it may be possible for a referral to a physiotherapy, th physiotherapist who will oversee any exercise programme. When a patient is in hospital having a stem cell transplant, they will have blood taken on a regular basis. Now they will have a Hickman line in, which is um, a cannula in one of the bigger veins just under the collarbone here. So that doesn't mean that they're going to have needles jabbed into their veins every day. The doctors will be able to take the, or the nurses will be able to take the, the blood straight from the Hickman line. Um, and once the, the stem cell transplant, once the stem cells migrate to the bone marrow, um, what doctors will see slowly and gradually is an increase in the healthy blood cells. So the red cells, the white cells and the platelets will start to recover and will start to get back to some level of normality. Now a patient won't be discharged from hospital until these counts are, are near as normal as possible. It's quite an anxious time um, preparing for, for a patient to come home when they've had a stem cell transplant. And I have to say, it's, it's quite a hot topic on the info line, this question, what do I do to prepare, prepare for my loved one coming home from his transplant? Again, um, for, with regard to practical uh, issues, they, they, they shouldn't uh, need to be on any dietary restrictions by this time. By the time they're discharged, they should be eating normally. Um, they still might have a bit of a reduced appetite and a bit of a sore mouth. Um, and so I guess it's just a case of monitoring that, that they are nutritionally taking in a good diet. Uh, and again, being vigilant about symptoms and side effects and reporting them quite promptly. As I say, when someone is first discharged home, they will continue to be monitored very closely by the team um, at the hospital, um, probably on a weekly basis to begin with. So there's always someone there to, to report any symptoms too and ag again they should have contact details for someone to con contact um, if they're concerned about anything at all. A lot of people do ask me how regularly do I need to clean the bed linen for instance and again this is an infection issue that, that, that's a worry for them um, and it's, it's not necessary to go overboard um, but yeah you know um, you know weekly clean linen I guess um, is, is quite important but as I say by the time someone's discharged from hospital their immune system will be pretty near normal levels so, so it shouldn't be such a problem. Fatigue is probably the, the biggest thing that, um, that patients tell us it takes the longest to recover from and it's probably the hardest thing to come to terms with and to get over. Often once a patient's discharged they're quite keen to get, to get on and do things, get back to doing their hobbies, their gardening um, and fatigue can often stop them from doing that. Um, fatigue is a very, very common problem and unfortunately it can be the thing that takes the longest to recover from. Some patients do tell us that it can take up to three or four months before the fatigue um, uh, disappears and they, and they begin to gradually f feel more like their, their normal selves. So monitoring um, happens, as I say, probably on a weekly basis to begin with. Um, if everything remains stable and the patient's well, that period of monitoring can, can slowly and gradually increase. And after about um, a couple of months, uh, it may be time for, for the patient not, not to, to go to hospital so regularly. It's not necessary for them to go so regularly. So after two or three months, it may be possible for them to be seen again on a monthly basis. Um, unfortunately, this can be a, bit, a time when, when patients 
psychologically and emotionally take a bit of a dip. Um, when you're in hospital having a transplant and for the first few weeks following discharge, you're monitored very closely. You've got a lot of uh, input from healthcare professionals and then that slowly tails off. Um, and it gives the patient time to reflect on exactly what they've been through and what might be in store for them for the future and the fear of the unknown. So quite typically, um, three or four months after transplant can be a time when, when depression even can set in. And again, it's so important to let your, your doctors and your nurses know that this is happening because it's fairly common and there's much that can be done. Often when patients go in for a stem cell transplant, their, their myeloma has already been reduced um, quite dramatically by initial treatment. It's hoped that the stem cell transplant will consolidate that and will reduce their myeloma even further, even into remission. And remission means that there's no evidence of the myeloma on any laboratory test. Um, so Patients generally won't know how well a, a stem cell transplant has done for about two or three months. And the transplant procedure itself can continue to work on the myeloma for up to about six months afterwards. For instance, I know patients who have come out of a stem cell transplant who have been very disappointed that they still have a level of paraprotein. But over the next three or four months, that paraprotein has gradually gone down. So it's, you know, it's very important to know that that can happen and not to be too disappointed if that's the case. There's no standard um, maintenance treatment in the UK at this moment out with a clinical trial. I know that some clinical trials do include a maintenance treatment. Um, if the patient's myeloma has been reduced to uh, remission, which as I've said, it means there's no evidence of the myeloma, then generally this treatment would stop and the patient would be continue to be monitored from there on in. If the patient is left with any residual myeloma, I know that some doctors will, um, after a period of time, um, say two or three months, may well uh, suggest a low dose of thalidomide, for instance. But the question around maintenance is one that, that it's not clear cut. There's no clear answer about maintenance therapy as yet. It's certainly uh, something that they will, we will probably see in the future, but at the moment it's not routine treatment for, for patients in the UK. In summary, um, patients recovering from a stem cell transplant, I would say um, take your time. Um, don't expect everything to improve very quickly. These things, unfortunately, don't happen overnight. It is a bit of a slow process, but day on day, you will gradually feel better. Um, Sometimes it might feel as if you're taking two steps forward and three steps back, but over a period of time, you will gradually start to feel better and, and back to your normal self. <laughs>